Hey folks, I'm back and I'm fat. I done put on some weight the whole nine. It's been a minute, but Mr. Harris RYC is back in the house podcast. I'm so sorry. We have not been around for months. I, I, I hang my head in shame, um, but we had an amazing summer. And I want to share with you some of the stuff we did over the summer. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Mr. Harris Show. 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 It's called the Journey. Journey. So we're back, and as I mentioned, we've been on, not on vacation, we just haven't been doing the podcast, but we're gonna be very consistent moving forward, um, I promise you. First of all, big shout out to Feedspot um, for rating us as the top podcast um, in the Bronx, and then I have the nerve to go on vacation, right? So we appreciate that shout out, we appreciate that recognition. But this summer was amazing. So, so let's talk about some, some of the things that happened this summer. Uh, music with a message, the MWAM band, those are my babies, the teenagers, uh, and the young people. I got kids that start the age of seven in that group. We got a chance to do a tour, the bus tour that we normally do, but we were all over New York State um, doing about 30 shows um, at a minimum, and I'm very proud of them. We also had the Community Partnership Series, the Community Partnership Series. It was something new. Um, that we were doing, we were going around to all five boroughs, and we were doing street performances, big shows, big concerts on the street, but we also invited the Department of Probation, Community Affairs, uh, NYPD, right, and of course the community, because we usually don't come together and do anything together um, in that level, at that level with those levels of folks. So like, that was an amazing time to come together and come together as a, as a, as a civil justice family, right? Um, we took photos together, we shook hands together, we didn't roll eyes at each other. Because when you think about it, very often young people get arrested by NYPD. Maybe the judge or the DEA will say, hey, I want you to go on probation, now you're in the probation department, right? Or you might be sent to community affairs to one of the blue chip programs or something like that. But you know what? None of them ever talked to, to each other. So we all are dealing with the same young person, but we never speak. We changed that with the Community Partnership Series this summer. Neon Arts summer program was amazing. We gave 140 jobs out to young people over the summer in all five boroughs. What an amazing time. On top of that, we were running multiple locations for summer camp. So kids were on tours, on trips. Uh, we had an amazing time with that as well. So we'll, you know, hope you guys can see some of the photos below. There's nothing better than seeing our inner city kids, um, getting them out of their immediate community um, in a space where they can have a good time, meet new friends, see new places, experience new things. Uh, and so we were able to do that. Um, one of my favorite times of the summer is Christmas in July and August, <laughs> right? So that's what I like to call it. Uh, we create Christmas all over again in August. So a lot of times uh, during December, people have leftover gifts and toys and say, hey, Mr. Harris, could you use these toys? Hint, hint, hint. You give it to me, I store it. And then in August, we create Christmas all over again for our kids in our community. Santa Claus, the reindeers, when we're outside, we do fake snow, the whole nine, right? So we just make Christmas happen all over again. Um, the Bio Blitz. And for those of us who don't know what a bio blitz, don't feel bad. I just learned about what it is myself most recently. We get the opportunity to partner uh, with the American Museum of Natural History. Uh, big shout out to Frank Burbank and all of the, the rest of the team, um, all the rest of the curators and scientists who come out with us for that night, for those three nights. So we take young people from the Bronx, we go up to the Catskills, and we camp out for three nights. Uh, no showers. Uh, uh, no showers, um, no showers. But during that time, we were catching all kinds of insects, all kinds of birds, fish, bats, snakes, and more snakes, and more snakes. And it's, I, I love to see that experience with young people when they first see a snake, and it's like, oh my God, snake! And they run the other way, and he says, oh, it's just a garter snake. Come back, touch it, feel it. 
and the kids touch it, they feel it. Next thing you know, they're not running from the snake, they're running to the next snake to find it. And that's what we're all about doing here, here at Renaissance Youth Center. Always offering new exposures, new experiences for our kids. Matter of fact, next summer, we normally go with 13, 14 kids um, to the BioBlitz, um, American Museum, and Frank doesn't know it yet, but I'm bringing a busload um, um, this year. Uh, I want as many kids to experience it as possible. That being said, there was something that we did that was a whole lot of fun, and it was something new for us. And we call it STEM in the Park. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in just a minute. So we'll be right back while I catch my breath. I'm going to lick my lips a little bit because I'm talking a lot, and I'm drinking some tea, which is drying my, my throat a little bit. But we'll be right back. And I got a special guest to help me talk about uh, STEM in the Park. So don't go nowhere. All right, and we're back here, uh, Mr. Harris, RYC podcast. Uh, Mr. Harris, or you can call me Mr. Colors today with all these colors that I have on. Um, I have a guest. Um, his name is Rohit. And Rohit, say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. Uh, Rohit is now part of the Renaissance Youth Center staff um, here as this guy is very, matter of fact, he's extremely bright. And just to hang out with him, I, I need to put my glasses on so I can be on the level that he's on at least. You know, I can feel as smart as, as he is. But uh, can you take a, a, a quick brief moment and tell um, the listeners a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so I'm the director of STEM education here at the Renaissance Youth Center. Uh, my background is in robotics and computer science. I've been teaching and tutoring for about six or seven years in that field. And I'm bringing that expertise here to RYC to grow our STEM program and bring STEM to the Bronx. Right. And is Rohit UNAM? Yes. You know, I was scared to say that. I was, I was afraid I might, I might get it wrong. Um, but I, I must admit, it's, it's, been a, it's been exciting to have you here because, you know, when I wanted to start and, and do STEM, and we're going to talk a little bit about STEM and STEAM and stuff a little bit later, um, it was very hard to find someone who wasn't a linear thinker. You know, um, usually you find someone where all they do is code Java or all they do is code C plus or just beginner coding. But you also had the engineering aspect, and you knew a lot about critical thinking, problem solving, which to me, this is what learning should be about. It's just not about gathering information. It's about what am I going to do with that information that I, that I have. So um, you had a chance to go out with us this summer and tell everybody what was STEM in the Park. So STEM in the Park was a program that we ran here over the summer at RYC, where we went out to parks in the Bronx and ran a demo with the students with these little STEM kits here. Uh, the idea was to draw students in and give them exposure to electronic circuits, motors, LEDs, and other uh, STEM topics and get them interested in STEM and see what they can do with it. So this is the kit right here. Um, these were donated from give to get right? Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, let me plug that. First of all, I thought you bought me lunch, but now I, I see what that is. But I want to first thanks, thank Broadcom for helping us do and put together the whole tour this summer. One of our number one STEM supporters. Uh, Councilman Salamanca um, for the Chrome computers that you gave. And give to get um, that gave us these kits. And so, you know, before you open up that kit and, and, and talk to us a little bit about that, if you can imagine Walking into a park, everybody's playing basketball and softball and soccer and screaming, and, and there's this huge red tent, and we're over there blasting our own music, acting crazy and having fun, and we would call it slime, and you educated me, and it's called Ooblack. Ooblack. Yeah. You know, that's my favorite singer, um, Jeffrey Ooblack. <laughs> Um, but uh, once again, that was a learning experience. We were also flying drones and playing with RoboMasters. But then you took out the little brown bag. So tell us what this is all about. So the STEM kit here is a little self-contained lesson. And inside, you'll find a few pieces of tech. The first is Play-Doh, which is low tech, but is electrically conductive, which is what we actually teach them. You can wire using Play-Doh. So you can plug in a battery, and it'll actually transmit current through it, even though it's made out of uh, uh, a material that you would think would be resistive or insulating. Um, here we have a propeller. A motor, a DC motor, standard DC motor, and a couple of battery holders inside. So the idea is with these wires, you're supposed to create a circuit that powers the motor 
or powers the LED and you can light a, light a light with different colors. So we're exposing students to the idea of circuitry, right? They use technology every day and when it comes to it, they a lot of students don't understand the basics of how electronics works. What is a battery doing in your phone? How does it actually also, uh, store electricity? How does it disperse the electricity to all the electronics right. in your phone? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's important to understand these things because you know, even, even from a low level, you can use that information to understand the world around you, but also it's a, it's a practical thing because people can use that information to learn how to fix their, fix their houses and right. things like that. Right. That's how I got when I started when I was younger. I actually learned how to fix a light switch. That was the first time I went and um, you know, messed with the circuit breaker, uh, understood what ground meant, how to be safe when working with electronics. And that was, that was a lesson that I learned from school when I started working with batteries. And I said, hey, I can actually fix this at home fix too. Fix something, right? Yeah. Absolutely. So without putting this together piece by piece, how does this work? How does this, what, what, what happens here? So we got, we got the, the battery cartridge here, which takes like AA batteries, right? Yep, the standard AA batteries. Yep. Uh, so we pop the batteries into the battery holder. Yep. And when we do that, the batteries are, are wired together. It gives us three volts of power. And um, with that, we can wire, use the alligator clips and create a circuit. A circuit is a loop, right? A loop that allows electricity to flow. It needs to be one continuous loop. If there's any kind of a break, it'll mess the circuit up. Right. So when we create that loop, we have to put something in it to actually use the electricity. In this case, we have the DC motor as well as some LEDs, which are everyone should be familiar with, but these colored little lights here, mm -hmm. right? So with these, you can actually show how we can create light from electricity or motion from electricity. Yeah. Yeah, because so we're converting electrical energy to other types of energy and yeah. other useful forms. Yeah, yeah. So already I, we learned some terminology, right, through this. We learned about what AA batteries are. Of course, kids got a chance to learn the, the negative and the positive, which way to place the battery in. The red wire is always usually the, the positive, yeah. and this is usually the neutral, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, and this is a what? DC motor. DC motor, right? So we got a chance to learn about that. Now, can I plug this to either end if I was to put it, or is there a right and wrong way of doing that as well? So with the motor, there is no right or wrong way. What it does is, depending on how, what direction you put it reverses in, the fan. reverses the direction of the spinning. With an LED, you actually have to put it in one way. It's, it's polarized. Yeah. So if you put it the wrong way, it won't light up. Yeah. Um, what, was your, what was your best takeaway? Because we did like six or seven parks, right? And some of them we had like 12, 15 kids, and sometimes we had 40, 50, and there was sometimes we had hundreds of kids, right? Mm -hmm. um, what was your best takeaway from doing this experience? What did you enjoy the most? I think the exposure that the kids had when we showed them something that they'd never done before. That, that moment of inspiration, that moment of learning yeah. is, is huge. And I think that the biggest takeaway that I saw was how underserved our population is right, right now. Right. When we came to these parks and we saw these students come up and do something as simple as this, this, is, this really isn't um, a complicated lesson. Um, every school could do this very, very, for a very low cost, very low training needed for teachers, but you can teach so much with this. Right. And I was just, I was, my biggest takeaway was that these kids just aren't getting this. Right. And right. that's, that's right. the biggest right. sad and, thing. And, and in your opinion, why is this important that you know, all young people, all people really get an opportunity to be exposed to this. So for me, we moved around a lot when I was younger. I've never been to the same school for more than three years. Hmm. So I've seen a lot of different school systems growing up and every single school system is different. And every school, different school system has blinders. They're missing something. They're not teaching STEM, they're not teaching music properly, they're not teaching theater, whatever it is, they're missing something. Yeah. And wherever you go, it's different. So I think that identifying that and trying to fill those gaps is really, really important for us. Yeah, yeah. And to take away the fear factor, right? Like, you know, a lot of times our kids feel like, I see this on the table. I don't know anything about wires. I don't know this. I'm going to electrocute myself. I'm not smart enough. I don't have a pair of glasses like Mr. Harris mm -hmm. and Rohit has on. I don't know what I'm doing. And so what we were able to do in the park is like, yo, we're just having fun. We have bubbles flying and da da da. And, and, I'm, and by doing that and being outside in the park, I think also took away that, that classroom kind yeah. of experience. Like, 
I'm the teacher, I'm writing on the board, now I turn around and do it together. It seems so like testy <laughs> as opposed to we're just screaming and having a ball. And I watched kids pick it up like this. We even had Spanish speakers there yep. with young kids. We had a, at one of the sites we went to specifically, it was, um, it was a, a foster care agency around the corner and it's happened to be that most of them were Spanish. Mm. And we, we were lucky to have um, enough volunteers who speak Spanish who sat down with them and did these activities. And so um, this was really, 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 really great. So this was part of our, our summer. And so here's the thing, this is a gateway. You do this, you have fun, you enjoy it, and we allow kids to take all of these home. So that way they can take it home and recreate that whole experience again. But out of that, you know, I, I, I'd be remiss if I don't brag about Treyana Sullivan, right? So Trey didn't know much more than this, right? She was new, she's a, she's a senior in high school. We heard about the national, um, the national STEM challenge. Yeah. challenge. We put three kids in. Mm -hmm. Two of our young people were uh, semifinalists, semifinalists, and she became a finalist. But what she was able to create is right is what's right here, and she doesn't she didn't have to apply much more than what this is. But she took a problem, and poop is a problem. I don't care where you live, um, and the Bronx is pretty bad. You know, um, we don't have poop bags and. And we got people who are just irresponsible at times, right? And so um, we let the dogs just mess right in front of the center and our kids track it and it comes right back inside. So um, she was fed up and she created this. So can you tell us what the Proop Project is and how, you know, how she was able to come up with this and build this? Yeah, so Project Poop is one of my favorite projects I've seen at ROIC because it's very, very simple, but the impact it has, it's really, really big. So the way this works, is a very similar to those re, uh, water bottle filling um, the water fountains that you see. You know, when you put your water bottle, it'll say how many w bottles of water we've saved. Okay, um, yes, yes, yes. That's, yes. that's the idea that we're replicating here. With Project Poop, we have a little switch here that can detect when the lid is open and closed. So it's a little button. When the, switch, when the lid is closed, the button is pressed. When it's open, it's not pressed. So that's how we detect when it's been open and closed. And we have a little screen here on our Raspberry Pi and the, raspberry, the screen will actually d uh, display how many times it's been opened and closed so it can say how many bags of poop have been thrown out. So it's a community building effort because it, it basically calls to action with the community to say, hey, this is an issue, let's work together and solve it. And it actually shows them how much progress they're making while they're doing it. So it's a very, it uses text to solve a social problem. Yes, yes. And yes. It's very, really effective at that. Yeah. And so big ups to Trey. Hi, love you. Mwah, mwah, mwah. She's away at college right now. But she was inspired through this, through um, the work we did with United Nations um, with the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. And one of them is number six, which is clean sanitation. And so she took that initiative, was able to create this. And it's interesting, someone came here from NYCHA not too long ago, I was showing off the project and he was like, that's one of the main things his seniors complain about. And he says, hey, how can I get some of these to place at my, at my NYCHA buildings? And so now we've turned this in from a STEM project to entrepreneurialism, right? So now kids can actually develop something, scale it, and da da da. So that's some of the stuff we're doing here at, at Renaissance. And I just wanted to share some of that. So I don't want you to think that I was on vacation uh, this summer, we were really out and about and creating and making kids feel amazing, making the community feel amazing. But we're back, and I want to do a part two of this, so don't, don't go nowhere. I'm going to have you come right back, because I want to talk a little bit more about STEM. Because I think it's something that we should be talking a little bit more about in terms of how to get it involved in our schools, after school programs, and so on and so forth. Um, so I want to thank you for being a guest today. Um, and he'll be right back on the next episode anyway. So for everyone out there who's listening, thank you so much for tuning in. And what I like to always say is uh, make sure that you love yourself. And any love you got left over, make sure you share that love with someone else. All right. Thank you again for tuning in to Mr. Harris RYC podcast. And um, I'll see you on the next, next show. I'm back. And I'm in fact. Welcome to the Mr. Harris Welcome Show. Welcome to the Mr. Harris Welcome Show. To the Welcome to the Mr. Harris Welcome Show. To the
Welcome to the Mr. Harris Show. It's called the Journey. Journey.